So, have you ever noticed how airplane seats are almost always blue? No, it's not because they're sad. Some people assume that this color was chosen because it reminds us of the sky. But the real reason is not that simple. We're about to answer that, plus tons of other popular airplane-related questions. And stick around till the end of the video, because we've got a useful bonus for you that'll let you know how to choose the best seat on the plane, <laughs> right next to me! Before we take off, take a moment to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications to keep up with our updates. So why are the seats blue? The first blue seats came into use several decades ago. And now, pretty much all airlines choose upholstery of this color. So why blue? With the stress and apprehension that comes with traveling, especially by air, airlines understood that it's important to calm passengers down and reassure them that everything's gonna be alright. You probably know every color has a hidden meaning and sends our subconscious different signals. According to scientists, most people associate the color blue with reliability and safety, which is essential even for travelers who don't suffer from aerophobia. It has a proven positive effect on the human body. It slows down your heart rate and relaxes tension. Also, according to a study published in Psychology Today, 90% of us subconsciously make a decision about the attractiveness of a company depending on the brand's colors. What about other colors? It's interesting to note that in the 1970s and 80s, some airlines tried to use red upholstery. But they later had to change it to blue because it turned out that the color red increased the level of aggression among passengers. Hey, those are my peanuts, pal! There's also a practical reason why airlines chose blue seats. Dirt, stains, and scrapes are less visible on this color. So that means these seats can be used for a longer period of time, compared with ones with lighter colored upholstery. And for those airsick passengers who miss the bag, it probably helps hide the barf colors as well. However, since fewer people can afford to fly first class, airlines use bright upholstery there more often, as the fabric wears out slower. Fabric or leather As for materials, the seats can be upholstered with either faux leather or fabric. As a rule, in aircrafts used for long-distance flights, like transatlantic ones, the seats are upholstered with fabric because it's more breathable for the skin, so passengers won't sweat, chafe, or experience any discomfort. That little piece of cloth put on the back of the seat is called an anti-macassar. The name comes from macassar oil, which men in the Victorian era would use to style their hair. This oil is extremely rich and leaves a greasy stain on anything it touches. So people at that time started putting these small pieces of fabrics on the back of armchairs where people would rest their heads to prevent any damage to expensive furniture. While we might not slather our hair in the stuff so much nowadays, anti macassars do help airlines get longer use out of their seats. Artificial leather works great for short flights. It's extremely wearproof, and even spilled drinks don't stain it. Alright, here's another one. Why don't plane windows line up with the seats? Have you ever been so excited to have a window seat until you actually sat down and realized that your much-awaited view was blocked by the back of the seat in front of you? Well, this happens basically because airlines care more about profits than your ability to take a perfect picture at landing, those greedy scoundrels. Aviation manufacturers provide airlines with recommendations on how to install seat rows correctly, but no one actually follows these rules. Tracks on the floor of the aircraft allow rows of seats to be organized at the airline's discretion. So companies take advantage of this in order to install, and therefore sell, as many seats as they can physically cram into the space. They're also free to choose the seating arrangement. It can be 343, 232, or 333, for example. So why are planes white? 
The reason why most planes are painted white isn't aesthetics or color psychology. It's just more efficient. Paint can make a plane anywhere from 600 to 1200 pounds heavier. And the heavier the aircraft is, the more fuel it needs. Airlines take the weight issue really seriously. In the 1980s, American Airlines decided to remove one olive from every salad on board and managed to save $40,000 a year. The color white also reflects light better, which means the plane won't overheat because of the sun's rays. Plus, white makes it easier to notice cracks, leaks, and any other damage that needs to be fixed. Finally, it takes rescuers less time to spot a white plane in case of an emergency. There are exceptions to every rule, of course. Many people remember the Lord of the Rings-themed Boeing 777 of Air New Zealand. And it's practically impossible to miss Russian Airlines S7's lime green planes and the bright orange aircrafts of Johannesburg-based Mango Airlines. Ooh, that sounds yummy! And why is it so cold on airplanes? All frequent flyers know that the trick to staying comfortable on board is to dress appropriately. And one of the most important tips any well-versed traveler can give us is to layer up before you get on the plane. If you agree that the cabin is always way too cold, hit that like button and make yourself known. The temperature on board is kept close to freezing for a reason. This way, it has nothing to do with psychology but with preventing health issues. The American Society for Testing and Materials International conducted a whole study on the matter. Many airplane passengers get hypoxia, which is when a person is more likely to faint at high altitudes than on the ground. It happens when bodily tissues don't get enough oxygen. To minimize the risk of fainting, airlines keep the temperature and air pressure in the cabin really low. So if it's a little too cold for your liking, don't complain. Simply ask for a blanket and take comfort in knowing that airlines are just trying to help people out. Or if you're on a newer model aircraft, you'll be happy to know that they have better thermostats that can adjust the temperature more precisely, even row by row. So where do the pilots sleep? Long-haul flights are exhausting enough for passengers, but can you imagine how the pilots feel? For flights that are longer than 10 and a half hours, there are more than two pilots operating the aircraft, and they take turns resting in private bunks for the crew. The Airbus A380, the world's largest passenger plane, also has sleeping quarters below its decks for the whole crew, including flight attendants, where they can have some rest. There are also some resting places and lockers for the crew below or above the main deck. In case there's no special rest area on board, or if the flight isn't that long, pilots take a break in the seat rows within or near the cockpit, or even in the passenger cabin. And in case you were wondering if crew members use the same lavatories as passengers do, the answer is yes on most planes. A Boeing 747, however, has a special bathroom exclusively for the pilots. And now you know the secret to how pilots can pee at 500 miles per hour. Bet you didn't know that now, did you? Bonus! How to choose the best seat. Toilet not included. We already mentioned that row positioning in aircrafts mostly depend on an airline's imagination. Or perhaps greediness is the appropriate word. <laughs> so choosing a comfortable seat is definitely not an easy task. Luckily, there are a few tips that can help you. There are special websites like SeatGuru.com, where you can see real row positioning in airplanes belonging to different airlines. They'll help you determine if you'll actually get to enjoy the view from your window seat or if you'll have to constantly lean forward to see the landscapes. If you don't want to listen to the hum of the engine throughout your whole flight, then choose a seat closer to the airplane's nose. You might have to listen to flight attendants chatting, but they probably won't be nearly as loud as the sound of the engine. If you didn't manage to catch one of these seats, then sit closer to the aisle as it's quieter than near the window. By the way, the seats at the front of the aircraft have one more advantage. Meals are served starting with you. So you'll have a wider variety of dishes. The tail end passengers rarely have a choice between chicken or fish. If you're tall, 
be sure to sit next to the emergency exit. There's more space between the seat rows, and you won't have to fly with your knees up to your ears. But keep in mind that the seats in the row near the emergency exit don't recline. This is done so they don't interfere with an emergency evacuation. So these seats might not be the best choice for some travelers. So, which of the answers to common airplane questions surprised you the most? Let's discuss it in the comment section below. Yeah, right there. If you found this video interesting, give it a like and share it with your friends so they can be in on the big secret too. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Remember, life is always better on the bright side.